How's it going, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. Another stump talk with you. And we're gonna talk about observation or having tools available to you for observing things. Now, how priority list, like where does this go? And why do you need this stuff? Now, there's two trains of thought, and I'm very minimal, minimalistic, but I do see a counter argument for having devices or optics like these, and we're gonna discuss some of them. So pretty much always I have been in a mindset of wanting magnification on a weapon system, right? That's why I love the ACOG. Not too much of an LPVO fan because of the weight tendencies because they tend to be heavier. Now when technology improves and we start getting lighter weight with more magnification, I would really enjoy that. But this is a four power optic. This is served me well in the military. This is identically the same ACOG that I use in and on my active military rifle. And that is why I put it on my own personal because I like it so much. Four power is very capable, but it starts to lack, of course, at distance and detail. At least with a weapon system like this that your max range is, you know, 600 meters or maybe even 800 meters. I get it. Some of you in the comments are going, there's no way your 11.5 is going to go 800 meters. I'm like, well, the projectile will, and I'm not going to get in that whole ballistics thing. Is it going to be effective? Is it not? I don't know. I'm not going to be going into that but observation wise. So typically the military does uh, binoculars, of course, and they tend to be very heavy. Now the military normally runs Steiners. These are just Vortex. I forget what power these are. I think they'll probably say here. Um, these are 12 by 50, so 50 optical lens and they're 12 power. Um, fairly light, but at the same time kind of heavy. Personally, I like these a lot. Like these have great quality for the price point, but what they don't have is lightweight. You know, they're not light, let's just say that. So I don't want to ruck around with just these. And I get it, Met TC is gonna come involved and in, well, what if you were like an LPOP and you were constant, your only job was observe. Okay, then yes. But as a common, just minute man or someone prepared and then moving through environments like this, I tend to stay away from binos, just my opinion, because they are heavy. I'm not gonna strap binos personally to a kit like this, my chest rig, because that takes up a lot. Now imagine having night vision on this side and binos on this side. You're just like, oh my gosh, like just with optics, you're talking, you know, four pounds starts to get issues. Now, these little solos i actually like a lot this one's a 10 by 25 so 25 um, optical and a 10 power so of course if we go back the acog has four power this has 10 power and then this is a 12 but of course uh, bigger optical so you pull in more light and whatnot but these are really handy and i always go back and forth putting one in my kit because it goes down to do I need it? And then most of the time, no. I carried this whole thing through Tusk and I think I used it maybe one time and I didn't really have to. I just remembered it was on my side. It actually was on the side of this carrier right here. It was um, in place of a smoke grenade, which I keep smokes there, um, but I couldn't fly with pyrotechnics to get to the training area. So I was like, well, what am I, you're gonna take off this pouch? No, I just put this in there. Now. There's been other scenarios and situations recently, even within my career as military, that I wish I had binos or this very close on hand. Cause I can just immediately like, hey, pull this out, take a look real quick, okay, cool. And then go back down. This is still 10 power. This is more than double the ACOG. Now the argument too, which I was minimalist and I kind of still am is, if you aim this weapon system at somebody, which don't worry, there's no one downrange. It's, there's a huge mountainside over here that everybody shoots into sometimes uh, if they truck their way back here. But some people use their sighting system as an observation device. Okay, personally, I have no issues with that in certain contexts. Now, I understand the ramifications of you, hey, I wonder if that's a good guy or bad bot, bad guy. Let's point my weapon system at a potential friendly. And if they see that, they're going to perceive that as a threat because you're aiming at them. Possibility, right? So I get that. And if you are in contested locations, maybe you should be fairly concealed and you can't 
you know, judge it. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm in an open field and I'm trying to see and I pull my weapon and then they engage. There's all these scenarios. So I have been leaning to this more often. And if I am in a vehicle, yeah, I, I bring these because the vehicle can hold the weight and then I'll just leave them. But observation or observing items or people or locations around you is very key. That's how you make better decisions. So I would, if you do, if you run just a red dot, at least like just say no magnification, I would recommend looking into magnification because if you can see better, you can arguably shoot better and make better decisions, all right? Decisions are what matter. It's not how well you shoot or can you put, you know, around 800 meters out in the exact same spot every time. Okay, well maybe you can, but did you make the determination if that was good or bad individual? You know, PID. So knowing more information is more important than honestly shooting sometimes, sometimes relax. <laughs> but that's all I wanted to bring up today is I would encourage you to look into devices and other ways of doing things for observation. Because like, again, like, again, I said, if you can see better, you can make better decisions and better decisions are overall what wins, loses the conflict, the battle, the war, whatever it is and Intel. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, I'm, I know I kind of ramble, Maybe I do, maybe you guys, man, this is terrible, I already clicked off, but it is what it is. Go ahead and subscribe. If you made it this far, and if you're not subscribed, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's like 70% of you that watch my videos are not subscribed whatsoever, which is crazy and it's free. Just hit it and it just helps, you know, content. And then it shows that more people are more motivated so I can start doing more videos. If I start seeing an influx of a ton of people that are really enjoying this, of course, you're gonna put more time into it. And this is just a side gig anyways. So I'm rambling again. Anyways, if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff, like talk like this, I can go into more detail. I just don't know who wants it, realistically. Other than that, I hope you all have a great day.